Hello everyone and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where we write the Game Engine from scratch. Previously we kind of finished writing the window framework and also made a program to test it. Today I'd like to spend a little time cleaning up that code and in addition enable the game application to open a main window for displaying graphics. Okay, let's actually move the windows that we are creating here in this test program to the screen from which I'm recording, so we can see them appear here as well. Therefore, I'm just going to subtract 2000 pixels from the X position and 700 pixels from the Y position. Because the screen that I'm recording from is to the left of the screen on which the windows appear, so I have to move them to the left. Now you can see them appear here, which is good. And it works fine. Next, I'd like to go through the code that we have been writing and clean it up a bit. So here in Windows, everything looks fine, except that I would like these const keywords gone because it doesn't really make sense for something like a U32. In this function, in create window, I think this part could be improved, or it's actually kind of wrong the way it is now. First, we are allowed to have zero for left and top position, right? So this check should go. And the thing that we have to do first is to set up this client area for the client size that we want to have, depending on the init information, width and height. And then we adjust for window style, the result of which will be copied in this rectangle again. So basically part of this should happen before we adjust this window rectangle. So what we do here is setting the right and bottom part of this client area depending on what width and height the user wants the window to be. So obviously the width can't be zero and the height can't be zero. So if we have a non-zero value for width or height, we can calculate the right of the client area by just adding the width of the window to the left side of it. And if we have a zero value for width, and we just use the initial value from client area, which we initialized here to be 1920. And then we do the same for calculating the bottom value. Next, we copy this client area into this rectangle and then adjust for the window style. So this value could be different depending on the non-client area size of the window. And here, what we can do now is to calculate the width and height of the window depending on the values that are contained in this rect variable. And here obviously we want to have the left and top position of the window and those are either given to us in this init info or if this init info is null, then we can take it from the top left value. And that one we initialize to be zero. So if we don't give any initialization info for window construction, then this value will be used and the window will appear on the upper left side of the screen. And then we also have to change these signatures here in the implementation of the window class. The next thing I'd like to do is to go and define a macro that we can use to exclude some parts of the code in the release build. 
for example, this assert does the same. If we are not in debug build, then this part of the code is excluded from compilation. So basically, this will be gone from the code. And since this part will be gone, then this set last error doesn't really have any use here. And I can't really use assert here because it doesn't return anything. And what I would like to have is something equivalent to writing this. So that we don't have this in the release build. But I don't want to litter the code with these if debug segments. I would rather write a macro for this. Undo what I just did. And go here in common headers. And here I can define a macro. So if we are in debug build, then the statement that we put here will be there. And if you are in release build, then this statement will be gone because there is nothing here that will be substituted for this macro. So going back here, I can type this macro. And it's basically the same as what assert does. So if we are not in debug build, then the assert is just this void zero. And otherwise, it's defined to trigger an assertion break. So let's do the same for our macro as well. OK, good. And this one should be just an else, because the elif is used for other implementations. For example, Linux, then we will have the Linux implementation of the window here, or maybe SDL2, or whatever platforms we will be using. We can use one or more elifs here, and if none of those are defined, then we will get a compilation error. For now, we'll only have a Windows implementation. So this is all good now. And the next thing I'd like to do is to go and add a window to our main application, the standalone game. So when we start our game, a window will appear that we can then use to display our game in. And the way I would like to do this one is to first define a structure that will have our window and also a surface from any graphics renderer that we have. Because the surface that we render to is coupled to the window on which we will display it, it makes sense to put those together. And to show you what I mean, I'm going to add a new folder here. And here I'm going to add a header for our high level renderer. And this high-level renderer doesn't care about any graphics API. We will use specific graphics APIs in the low-level renderer that we'll be using with the high-level renderer. Here we just define the interface of the renderer and we included this window, which is also platform independent. So this renderer doesn't know anything about any platform or API that we are going to use. So here I'm going to define a class. It's the surface class. And this represents the surface on which we show our graphics. And this surface will be on the main window. And therefore, I'm going to have a struct that pairs the window with this surface. So now to open a window, we go to engine CPP and open a main window here whenever the engine is initialized. We include the platform types here because we should know what operating system we are opening a window for. If we fail to load the game binary, we return false, and otherwise we'll try to open a window.
Again, the same as we did for the test program that we have here. We need a window procedure and a caption for our window. So the window procedure will be the same as we have here. I can copy paste it from here. But in this case, we'll only have one window and I'm going to put that window here. So because we only have one window, we only need to check this window if it is closed. So this becomes a lot simpler. And we already have a reference to our windows, so this is not necessary. We just can directly access our window. And that's it for now for our window procedure. And we can include this one here now. We don't have a parent window and the caption will be I'm all game. And all we have to do now is to call create window. This will create a window for us if everything goes well. And when the game shuts down, we want to close the window. Now we can test to see if it works. Now, if I press F5 to run the game in the debugger, then we should see a window. Of course, it appears on my other screen, but I can move it here. I'm not sure why these lines happen. I think it's because of my recording software, but normally if I run the program or open the window like this, then these lines are not here. Let's build a release. And now we can go to our documents where our game is. And you should see the release built here. And this tiny program, which is just 49 kilobytes, we can click on it and it will run. And we can also go to full screen and back from full screen. And it works just fine. And our Kusa Luguba Coop is still beeping, which is also fantastic. I'm happy with this. And I think we are also done kind of with the basic implementation of our Windows platform structure. So next time I'm going to try and host the windows that we create in the editor so we can display the renderer stuff in the editor as well. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time. Until then, take care and happy game engineering.